people of the internet, my name is Johnny. Welcome back to yet another FNAF news video. We got a whole bunch of topics to talk about today. Mainly a whole bunch of merchandise news, so hopefully looking forward to that. But besides that, we got some updates on Five Nights at Candy's and some behind the scenes from Steel Wool Studios. Let's not waste any more time. Like I said, we got a lot of topics to go through in today's video, so scroll down, tickle that subscribe button, and let's kick this video off with probably the best merchandise we have ever seen for FNAF, and that is this brand new Nightmare Fredbear hamburger shirt from Hot Topic. Just absolute peak FNAF merchandise other companies might as well give up at this point. This incredible art was made by Turntail, an official FNAF artist, and yeah, if you've ever wondered what Fredbear as a burger would be like, and then also want it on a t-shirt, Hot Topic has your back. There's been a whole bunch of other products from Hot Topic as well, including this brand new Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizza Plex notebook, and each of these characters up here, when you get to their page, it features the art of their twisted variants. And finally, the brand new Blacklight Funko Pops of Foxy and Freddy are also rolling out. And next up for news, we got actually a brand new company that just acquired the FNAF license because Good Smile, the company behind the Nindroid figures, are going to be making a Freddy Fazbear figure. Traditionally, I believe this company makes a whole lot of figures based on anime, but they're entirely customizable. They're actually really, really well-made figures. I've actually got the Monica one right there. So it might just look like a regular Freddy Fazbear figure right now, but when it releases, presumably it's going to have swappable faces and a whole bunch of poses you can put them into. And hopefully some point in the future, we can get the rest of the FNAF 1 gang as well as some other interesting FNAF characters like Springtrap turned into these figures. Moving on to apparel, we got Creator Inc. releasing FNAF The Awakening Chapter 1. As you can see, this art series of merchandise just has a whole bunch of very interestingly styled art on t-shirts as well as we got some brand new FNAF hats and the Faz coin is back in stock apparently. And then we also had Theory Wear by the Game Theorists also release a brand new wave of FNAF products. And this launch was massive. As you can see, they've got jackets, hats, brand new t-shirts, more t-shirts, a Monty jacket, which actually Actually, it looks really, really sick. An apron, a confetti crop top, some more t-shirts, a Chica cheerleading outfit from Toy Chica's high school years. Crazy outfit. Hey, 2,000 likes and I'll wear it though, but crazy outfit. And now moving on to Funko, we got our very first look at the upcoming Funko Pop candies featuring clear cases of Freddy Frostbear as well as Santa Freddy. These collectibles contain little vibrant sugar candies that you can eat, but as you can tell, the thing that caught my attention the most was the figures used, especially that Freddy Frostbear figure, because as I'm sure you're all aware, Freddy Frostbear does not have a pop figure, but not only do they have a mold for it, they also have official artwork for it. So hopefully that means at some point in the near future, Future, we can get that Freddy Frostbear pop figure. Seems like it would have been a nice time to release it alongside the new holiday pops, but I guess not. And then we also got an update on the future of Funko's brand new FNAF Fight Line battle game. Because an AMA with the creator actually took place not too long ago on the official FNAF subreddit, and this is what Luke had to say. For new characters that could be included in the game, he said hypothetically we could add anyone. Though all of the ideas get put in front of Scott to approve, and if they could do a series 2, Luke personally would love to see some FNAF World Halloween edition characters like Zangle. He also confirmed that some book slash comic characters showing up could happen if Scott approves that direction for the game, and that it is Luke's personal goal to have FNAF Fight Line become a way for a lot of less visible FNAF characters to get figures. Which I'm pretty sure is quite frankly why Luke wanted to use the FNAF World characters like Purple Guy and Red Bear down here. Which I love that direction, it seems like the creator is actually a big FNAF fan himself, so we're very blessed to have him on board. And then Luke also talked about a very interesting brand new mode they're trying to make because he revealed that Anim Dude was scrapped from series one because they wanted to do something really special with him if he got into the game. Something like a boss mode would be cool, which he later clarified. If he could add one thing to series one, it would have been a way to have boss battles. I would love for the opportunity to add Anim Dude and Purple Guys to the games as special boss characters. If series one does well, who knows what will happen. And then do you remember the FNAF Pillow Pet? This cuddly guy that everyone was just dying to have officially made? Well, do you wish he was double the size he currently is? Because if you did, Pillow Pets has you covered now introducing their 30-inch Freddy Fazbear Pillow Pet. Double the size of the one you just looked at. This retails for $90, though currently it is out of stock. But if you need 30 inches of Freddy in your life, I think I've made this joke already. 
he's there for you once he restocks, I guess. And now let's move on to some hex news because we got our first look at the prototype for their upcoming spring trap plushie. And of course, as I always say with these first looks at the hex plushies, these are prototypes. So absolutely, he is going to go through so, so many alterations. This is not at all what the final plush is going to look like. And hex also released a roadmap for the rest of the plushies they're going to be releasing for this year. Starting off with Withered Freddy, Bonnie, and Foxy. They're all going to be releasing on the 27th in October. Withered Chica, Withered Golden Freddy, and Springtrap will be releasing in late November. And lastly, Mangle is to be concluded. Unfortunately, no release date on Mangle just yet, but hopefully sometime pretty soon. Moving on now to U2s, we've gotten a whole bunch of updates with U2s and all of their upcoming launches for FNAF products. First up, we got this 3D model for their upcoming Mimic figure. This bad boy is gonna be a part of the rest of the Ruin Wave, which includes the Mexus Entity, Ruined Chica, Ruined Roxy, Ruined Monty, and the Ruined Eclipse. Sticking with Ruin, it seems like we're gonna be getting a plush release of some of the characters as well, because over on TikTok, U2's teased an upcoming wet flora bot plushie. Probably not one of the characters we wanted the most to be made into a plushie, but now that I'm looking at it, it's freaking adorable. And I know we're only in October, but the holiday season is drawing near, and it seems like U2's is getting ready for that, because they teased this upcoming holiday card featuring Ruined Monty dressed up as Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. So it seems that during the holiday season, most likely U2's is going to be releasing some holiday cards featuring the characters dressed up as different festive outfits. Moving on now to the Fanverse plushies, we finally got our first look at the Sitting Candy the Cat plush. And of course, he looks absolutely adorable. And like I just said, Sitting Candy is a part of the Fanverse plushies wave, which is going to include a long version of Candy, a Sitting Pop Goes, a long version of Pop Goes, Chibi Ignited Freddy from t Jock, as well as a plushie of Ignited Freddy. And just like the Ruin wave, this wave is planned to be released before the end of the year. Though while you wait for your Pop Goes plushies from U2s, may I interest you in some brand new Halloween pins of the Pop Goes characters? These brand new pins actually released tomorrow, the 24th of October, by the time you're watching this video. It features the cast of Pop Goes Evergreen dressed up in various Halloween costumes. Though that's not the only set of FNAF U2s releasing later this month, because again, on the 27th of October, not only are we getting the five haunted FNAF 1 figures, we're also going to be getting that Freddy device holder figure, as well as a FNAF puzzle. And then also tomorrow, alongside the Pop Goes pins, the FNAF gummies are finally going to be releasing. U2 sent me these gummies a few months back, I want to say early. As you can see, I've not cracked into them just yet, but I've heard they're pretty good. Can't wait for you guys to get your hands on them as well. They're doing an interesting thing with the gummies wave because you get six bags every month for $30. So instead of like a one-time purchase, like what you usually do with their plushies and figures, it's a monthly subscription, which is a little weird, but I guess we're going to see how it goes. Though YouTube did confirm that only 500 subscriptions at launch will be made. So if you want your hands on some Fredibles, I'd recommend being there the second they launch. And now let's take a quick pit stop at Five Nights at Candy's in the Fazbear Fanverse Initiative because Emil Mako has made yet another set of Game Jolt posts in celebration for FNAF 4 getting a whopping 50,000 followers on its Game Jolt page. I'm not gonna read the entirety of the devlogs, they'll be linked down below if you do want to do that, but Emil talks about the updates for the original trilogy of FNAF games, bug fixes, gameplay rebalancing, quality of life improvements, stuff like that. And also the idea of actually putting those trilogy of games on onto Steam, which I personally would love just because, number one, it's cool to have official FNAF, you know, fanverse games on Steam, but also achievements, trading cards, point shop stuff, you know, stuff like that. And then Emil also made a post about the upcoming spin-off title, FNAF Fur, introducing a brand new character, Tilly the Cow, as well as some more just general updates regarding the upcoming spin-off title. And for our final news topic for today, it's nothing too massive, but I thought I'd end off on a pretty fascinating note, because we got some updates from Steel Wool Studios. First off, celebrate Celebrating the four-year anniversary of the Curse of Dreadbear DLC for FNAF Help Wanted, which is just crazy to think that it's been four years since Curse of Dreadbear. I freaking love that DLC. And then Steel Wool also blessed us with some amazing behind-the-scenes of the PAX West booth, showing off the incredible construction of the Eclipse animatronic made by Deregular Sauce. Stuff like this, I love to see. It's always so, so crazy to me. Sauce is so good at what they do. PAX West was such an amazing, amazing booth, and hopefully next year they can do some 
something equally as amazing because I would love to see that. But that is going to do it for this FNAF news video. Thank you all so, so much for watching the FNAF movie. We didn't talk about it in this video, but it's dangerously close only in a few days now. So hopefully you guys are excited for that. It's an amazing time to be a FNAF fan. After eight years, the film is finally almost here. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.